Hello all, welcome to part 51 of Cucumber BDD training series. In this session, I am going to explain and practically demonstrate how to integrate TestNG in Cucumber projects. So let's get started. Till the previous sessions, we have used JUnit as a unit testing framework along with Cucumber BDD, right? Now I am going to integrate TestNG in place of JUnit in this Cucumber project. So how to do that? So what will be the difference between uh, JUnit unit testing with Cucumber and uh, when you are integrating TestNG unit testing framework with Cucumber? What will happen? What will be the difference? And what are the changes you have to do? All these things I am going to cover in this session. So as part of your real-time project, you may either use JUnit as a unit testing framework with Cucumber projects, or you may use TestNG as a unit testing framework with your Cucumber projects. So it, it depends on project to project, guys. Okay. Whenever you are working with JUnit, you already have seen how to work with that. But what about TestNG? I'm going to cover in this session, guys, with a practical demonstration. First thing, we have to add TestNG library and remove the JUnit library from our project. If you go to this Eclipse IDE, and here, uh, let me uh, from this project, guys, from this project, let me open this pom.xml file where we have added all the dependency tags of the required libraries. Here you see JUnit library is there. I'll remove this JUnit library here, okay? I'll remove this JUnit library, guys, okay? So in place of this JUnit library that I have removed from the dependency stacks, I am going to add testng library. For that, I'll open new tab in the browser and say mvn repository and search for testng here. Whatever the latest version of testng that is available here, I'll click on this testng and whatever the latest version we have so far as per today's data and all. Okay. In future, when you are watching this video, you may have a, another latest version. You can take that also. Okay. Copy this and paste it here. That's it. And organize it well so that it look, it looks good. Okay. So testng library is added in place of JUnit. JUnit we have removed and testng we have added. And click on save all. These libraries will be downloaded. And next thing. Here, Cucumber Java is fine because our programming language is Java. No need to change anything here. Next thing is here, instead of Cucumber JUnit, we have to use Cucumber TestNG. So JUnit unit testing framework is removed. In place of that, we have added TestNG unit testing framework. So here also Cucumber TestNG we have to use instead of Cucumber JUnit. Further again, go to the MVN repository and here search for Cucumber TestNG. Just give these two words, guys. You will get that in the output. IO Cucumber, Cucumber TestNG. Okay, from IO Cucumber only we have to take and what is the version we have used for other things like Cucumber Core and Cucumber Java 7.9.0. So choose a version which is matching with this. Okay, that is 7.9.0 for now. And copy this. And uh, paste it here. Okay, instead of Cucumber uh, JUnit, you just add Cucumber TestNG. Okay, that's another thing. Just organize it. And that's fine. Click on Save All. And that's it, guys the library addition is over okay we have added the testng library to the project okay and testng library we added cucumber testng library also we added now now next is we have to close this and go to the test runner here already errors are coming because we have removed jnit right here import statements for jnit are there remove all this stuff remove all these import statements which are giving the errors because they are using jnit but no more we are using jnit so we are using testng and in uh, people prefer testng over JUnit sometimes, guys. Okay, sometimes people use JUnit over testng, and sometimes people use testng over JUnit. But testng is more powerful than JUnit, guys. Okay, whatever the reasons may be, different combinations may work out. Sometimes people like JUnit only because a lot of people are there in the market still use JUnit. Okay, they are okay with that. They don't want to go with advanced options that are provided by testng. That's fine. But there are some people who prefer to use testng over jnit okay there are different kind of categories here okay so if you are you if you want to use testng right jnit has to be removed so i have removed the import statements of the jnit there and this statement is also from jnit guys it's not required at all at the rate of it can remove now this cucumber options okay now can be imported from cucumber testng okay earlier io cucumber jnit was there okay now io cucumber testng from that we are importing the cucumber options that's another one change the same options will remain same as this uh, attributes and values will remain same, same. No need to change anything. Okay. Here, but one here we have removed at the rate run with, okay, from JUnit. But here, beside the class, this class is test runner class, right? This is a test runner class. We have to say extends. Extends. We have to give a class name that is abstract testng cucumber test. 
this is a predefined class from testng guys from testng we will get this okay abstract abstract testng abstract testng cucumber cucumber test cucumber test okay hold the mouse on this uh, and import this from io cucumber testng guys okay from testng library we have to import this now the test runner class is ready Our errors are gone off you see we have converted the JUnit project into the testng okay the j uh, cucumber JUnit project into cucumber testng we have converted converted now with the help of the library then what next the next thing is uh, now let's uh, run this test runner okay earlier when I right click on this uh, and say run as we are, we used to get a J unit option, but J unit option is not coming because we have removed J unit from this project, right? So I was expecting test change option to come here, but it's not coming. What may be the reason? What may be the reason why I'm not getting the test change option here? When I say right click run as J unit option is not coming, but test change option also should come, right? We have, we have added the test change libraries. We have replaced all these things with the uh, test change stuff this predefined class with this and this stuff and all the stuff, but still you are unable to run it because you are not getting an option to run. The reason behind that is there is one more thing that is required for testng that is in this Eclipse IDE, we have to install a plugin. We have to install testng Eclipse IDE plugin, okay, in Eclipse IDE. How to do that? For doing that, guys, we have to go to one website, okay? There the instructions will be provided like how to install testng Eclipse IDE plugin in Eclipse IDE editor, okay? For that, open this, close this part, guys, and go to the official website of TestNG. Simply say testng.org, which is the official website of TestNG. And here you will see Eclipse option. Click on that. Then under Eclipse, you will see this installation. Click on that installation. Under installation, install the plugin option will be there. Just click on that. You'll be taken to this page, guys, where you have to scroll down and go for Eclipse plugin. Okay. And here, install from update side. You have to select help and install new software. Okay. Help and uh, install new software. You have to select. The moment you get this dialog, okay, what you have to do next is you have to copy this URL, guys. Okay. Copy this URL and paste it here. That's it. Okay. Once you paste it here, the loading will happen sometimes, or you have to click on add and give, you can give test ng and give this URL also. Everything is fine, guys. Anything is fine. Okay. Either you can, if it is detecting, that's okay. Or you have to click on add and give that test ng name or and give that URL and then select this test engine option and click on next. In a while, test engine will get installed in our machine. Okay. And in this Eclipse ID editor, okay, as a plugin. Without this test engine Eclipse ID plugin, we cannot run that particular runner class with test engine. Okay. So it's asking for, for us uh, to install the test engine Eclipse ID plugin. It won't take much time, guys. Okay. You'll get a dialog soon. Let's wait. Sooner you will get, get a dialog here. Uh, whether you want to kind of trust or something will come. Let's see. Our license agreements will come. Let's see. We got all these options, guys. Installation details. These are uh, as part of testng. These things are. These modules are getting installed. Click on finish, guys. That's it. You see, trust all content. You have to select always trust all content. Yes, I accept the risk. Click on trust selected. These are the basic steps, guys. These are the basic steps. Uh, okay, that anyone can understand. Here you see it's installing 83% almost. It will ask you to restart now. Okay. Uh, restart the Eclipse ID. Okay. So that the plugin will be configured properly in the Eclipse ID. In a while, Eclipse ID will restart. Once it is restarted, we can run that uh, test runner class without any problems. Okay. We have completely converted the project into Cucumber JUnit project into Cucumber TestNG project after installing the TestNG Eclipse ID plugin. You see, before doing that, if you are trying to run the runner class, you are not getting any option. But after installing the TestNG Eclipse ID plugin, and if you try to run the runner class, you'll get the options. Okay, we'll see that. Eclipse ID is launching. Let's wait for the Eclipse ID to launch. Almost there. So it has launched, guys. It has launched the Eclipse ID. And uh, now, what do you have to do next? Right click, guys. Simply right click to see whether the test, if you're getting that run as option as test ng test, that means test ng Eclipse ID plugin is now installed. Select this option. 
You see, now all these feature files under this project will be invoked with the help of this runner class via testng, not junit, okay? Earlier junit, now testng. We got the output, guys, you see? The same pretty output we got with pretty plugin, whatever the output we generally get, right? The same output this time. Test, using test engine, we have run the test, okay, feature files and all, runner class and all those stuff. Okay, the same output we got as we got with JUnit, okay? And here we got this box. Additionally, we got all this stuff from test engine, guys. Earlier, with JUnit only, this box we used to get, but uh, pass it, pass it, this kind of options uh, were not coming. You see, that's why I was saying that uh, test engine is an addition, advanced, okay? Test engine is an advanced unit testing framework when compared to JUnit. You see here default suit contains 14 tests and 14 got passed. Okay, like that you will get the results. And uh, earlier, when you are running the this particular run class with the help of JUnit, we, we got a JUnit tab under which we used to see the results. But here, we'll get the test, test engine tab. Okay, test engine runner this is, test engine results tab this is. Okay, you can see that. So here all run scenario, run, it's not supporting much at this moment. Okay, so it's simply saying run scenario, login with valid credentials. So JUnit is more, uh, you know, right, kind of attached with Cucumber. As you can see, it's giving some run scenario and uh, giving some details here, okay? No feature files are mentioned, you see? It's not properly organized, as you can see. Uh, the testing is not properly organized with Cucumber, okay? That some problems are there with the uh, integration of testing with Cucumber, guys. The I, I like, uh, I really like when using with Cucumber, right? JN, it is uh, more preferable, I feel. But still, if for some people they want to use testng with cucumber they can go with uh, with this one but uh, there are some odds here you see some test runner is coming some run scenario we don't understand you see there are three feature files uh, they are not identified and not these scenarios are not identified properly under each and every individual uh, feature file kind of thing the structure is not good but uh, all the tests 14 out of 14 tests are being shown here that's the only thing apart from that you will get that uh, reports and all those stuff guys there's nothing much and uh, also uh, you can do one more thing in the test engine, guys. This runner class, instead of running this runner class directly, what I can do is I can create a test engine XML file here. I can mention the name of this test runner in the test engine XML file. Using the test engine XML file, I can invoke this test runner and test runner will invoke the feature files. Features files will invoke the uh, step definitions and uh, the steps will be running, okay? So like that we can do, guys, okay? So here we are running the test runner directly, right? But in real-time projects, what we generally do is... Uh, we invoke this test runner with the help of testng, guys. Okay. We invoke this test runner with the help of testng.xml file. Okay. How to generate the testng.xml file? Here, out of all these classes like my books, test runner, login, register search, only this test is containing the test keyword. Okay. So right click on this project, guys, and uh, select uh, testng and say convert to testng. Okay. The moment you say convert to testng, you'll get a dialog here. So the dialog says that uh, generate testng.xml file. Where exactly it is generating under the tutorials in your project, it is generating. Okay, let it generate. Okay, no problem for now. Under the project directly somewhere, it is generating. That's okay. So you can generate it anywhere, guys, no problem. But uh, this is the place for now. Okay, uh, basically, generally, we generally generate this testng.xml file directly under the project or under the SRC test resource also sometimes. For now, let's not uh, go with the uh, framework part. In framework, we have to take this as a strict thing, but for now, we can generate it anywhere just for demonstration purpose only, right? Of the Cucumber concepts, right? So I'm going to generate the test engine directly under the project. So you see here, hooks, my hooks is being identified here, but this is not the class we have to run. We have to run the test runner class. So we'll update it, okay? After clicking on finish, after this uh, test engine.xml file got generated here, I'll open it. And uh, in this test engine.xml file, this kind of uh, design tab is selected. Just select the source tab so that you can see the XML content. And here, so instead of hooks, my hooks, just remove that and give runner dot under the runner package, test runner is there, okay? Test runner you have to give. Test runner you have to give. This is the best way, okay? This is the best way, guys. Runner dot test runner is the best way. Now, right click on this testng.xml file and say run as testng suit. What will happen when you run this testng.xml file? It will invoke this test runner class from the runner package. That means this class will be run indirectly instead of directly running the test runner class here with the help of test engine, we are running the test engine.xml file test engine.xml file which is referring to this uh, test runner is invoking this test runner and running it and this is invoking the feature files feature files are invoking the step definition methods and all those stuff and we'll get the results okay so i'm not going to run the test runner class this time i'm going to run the test engine.xml file you see 
and right click on this test XML file and say run as testng suit. The same output will come because testng.xml file will indirectly invoke the test runner in the runner class and uh, the test runner will invoke the feature files and you'll get the same output. 14 out of 14 will be passed. You say testng is a step came, same thing you'll get, okay? 14 out of 14 got passed, okay? Uh, let's see this uh, still run scenario is coming, that's okay. And you'll get the reports, guys. If you refresh this project, if you refresh this project, since you are running using testng, guys, you'll get test output folder. In that, we'll get a report. It's not a Cucumber report or something. This is a testng report, guys, okay? Testng uh, results report. Uh, under test output for after after running this after re uh, refreshing this project then after you get the test output folder right uh, expand the test output folder and right click on index.html and say open with web browser you'll get the test engine report okay the problem is you see run scenario run scenario is coming that's the problem okay by default problem is there okay we can't do anything uh any options to change it or do something we'll we'll see in the framework guys okay what is the best way uh i'll explain in the frameworks but as uh that framework part is not part of this series but uh, it's part of another uh, uh another uh, series guys okay so here we are only i'm only covering the cucumber concepts okay i'm not going to cover the frameworks and the real time stuff but to some extent i'm covering okay fine this is only for cucumber concepts i'm covering this series okay fine to understand each and every concept of cucumber that we use okay in the projects i'm going to, i'm covering in these sessions so most probably this is going to be the last session guys okay of this cucumber series uh okay so around 51 videos came up this is going to be the last uh if you are watching the cucumber series okay as part of cucumber concepts you have to understand this series is for you fine anyhow let's not uh dig deep into that and here apart from index.html you will also get emailable report also this is also test engine thing only test engine report only so this is for emailing purpose you see like this you will get but uh, you see this this problem is there run scenario problem is there guys okay the scenario names are coming here, but uh, they are not organized according to the feature file and all. Instead, run scenario is coming. So that's the problem. We'll deal with that later. Okay, fine. Okay. Then what else? We can also run using Maven, guys. Uh, how to run using Maven? We all, uh, how to run this using Maven then? For running using Maven, we already know that uh, it will not pick the testng.xml file. It will directly pick the test runner because this runner class is mentioned with test keyword either at the beginning or at the end as I covered in the previous sessions, okay? You can still right click and say, uh, run as Maven test, you can say, but it will not invoke this session XML file. Maven will invoke this test runner because this is a runner only Java file, which is having this test keyword. It will invoke this test. You know that Maven should be plugin also should be there by default. Uh, that is already there in the pom.xml file. I don't have to do much. You see, the things are working fine, but here test engine.xml file is not invoked. Maven is directly invoke this, invoking this test runner and you are getting this results and all the stuff, okay? Okay. Fine. Next. Next what is that? Next thing is, so I want to invoke the testng.xml file and test, uh, using Maven, I want to invoke the testng.xml file and testng.xml file has to invoke the test runner. Anyhow, it will invoke and test runner has to invoke the feature files and feature files have to invoke the step definition files. This is what should be the criteria. Here, Maven is directly invoking the test runner, but I want Maven to invoke the testng.xml file instead of test runner. What I have to do? Go to the form.xml file, guys, where you have this Maven Super plugin. Okay. You see, this is the plugin. So I am going to replace this plugin with a more advanced version of the same plugin. Okay. How to do that? Just come here. Uh, Maven Surefire. Okay. Testng. Like this, okay. Maven Surefire let's test and you just search for these three keywords, guys. Okay. Maven Surefire test and you, okay. Using test and link will come, come, uh, go to that page and scroll down uh, till I see some section here. You see, this is the thing, okay. So from plugin to plugin, you copy. It has a test engine XML file provided. Copy that, guys. Copy that. Copy this and come back here and replace this uh, default plugin thing with whatever I have copied, okay, from that file. I'll organize it. So that you can understand better. Tab. Yeah. Here you see in this Maven Surefire plugin, which file is mentioned now? Testng.xml file is mentioned, which is directly under the project. So it can testng.xml means directly under the project, it will search. So here now, this Maven Surefire plugin, when you run the project with the help of Maven, right? Maven test, 
Maven test will go to this Maven Surefire plugin, but now Maven Surefire plugin is uh, directing you not to the test runner class, rather it is directing you to the testng.xml file. So with Maven, testng.xml file will be invoked. Testng.xml file, as you already know, contains test runner. So test runner will be invoked by the uh, testng.xml file and test runner will invoke the feature files and all the stuff. Okay, this is how the things will be there. Now, what I will do simply is I'll right click on this project similarly and say uh, run as Maven test. Now, Maven will invoke the testng.xml file using the Maven Surefire plugin because in the Maven Surefire plugin, we have provided testng.xml as the file to be invoked. And that testng.xml file will invoke the test runner class and test runner class will invoke the feature files and then feature files will invoke the step definitions. There is the process. Let's see. You see, Maven has invoked the testing.xml file, testing.xml file has invoked the test runner, test runner is invoking the feature files, and now we got this output, okay? This is how it happens. The same results maybe. You see, the results are not coming this time, okay? Okay, the results are not coming this time, you see? The uh, testing results tab, because we are running with the help of Maven, right? Maven is invoking testing and testing then. So we are not getting the testing results, okay? That's okay, fine. Anyhow, we are not going to use any testing reports in real time. We have to use extent reports or etc. Okay. So, but we are not going to use uh, test engine reports. We are not going to use test engine reports, guys. Don't worry about that. Whether you see some, you know, kind of uh, run uh, run scenario outputs and all, that's not good way. Good way. Okay. We'll be using a different reporting system, guys. Okay. In real time, uh, that is extent reports generally. I covered already extent reports with, uh, I mean, uh, already covered, right? Somewhere here. Or if not, uh, okay, Cucumber HTML report I have covered, not extent report. So I'll be covering that extent report as part of the frameworks, guys, but not, but for now, just ignore that uh, extent report with the uh, Cucumber. Uh, all the Cucumber concepts I covered in this session, guys, okay? All the Cucumber concepts from the beginning to the end, that is what is Cucumber, uh, what are the different BDD tools, what is BDD, official website of Cucumber, BDD in Agile, feature files, and all those stuff. A lot of topics I covered as part of this series, okay? So this will make you guys uh, comfortable with, uh, you know, Cucumber concepts. Tidy Gherkin plugin, multiple feature files, a lot of step-by-step step we have come here. Okay, Cucumber HTML report, regular expression, using regular expressions in Cucumber, Cucumber expressions, pretty plugin, uh, this kind of exceptions, how to deal with comments, how to write comments in Cucumber feature file, tags, hooks, staggered hooks, before steps, a lot of hooks, concepts, data tables. Then uh, tags, Okay, generating different type of reports and uh, different options that we can provide in the runner class and different things about reports and additional stuff like uh, shortcut and monochrome and integrating test engine Cucumber. A lot of things I covered in this session. Okay, this is a Cucumber series, guys. Hoping that you got uh, good knowledge out of Cucumber from this series. So thank you all. Uh, that's all for this series. Uh, bye, everyone.